okay hi everyone in this video we are going to solve another practical problem sum based on partly paid shares of liquidation of company now let us see how do we solve this particular kind of sum okay now this is the question which is given a limited went into voluntary liquidation on 31st december 2019 So this is an important date, 31st December. The company is going into liquidation. The liabilities that the company has is preference shares of 100 each, 5 lakhs. 2,000 equity shares of 100 each, 75 is paid up. So here 25 rupees is still unpaid. 7,500 equity share of 100 each, 60 paid up. So here 40 rupees is still unpaid. Then they have debentures, interest outstanding on debentures. creditors and then various asset which includes land and building machinery patent stock trade receivable cash and pnl account okay thereafter the adjustments the preference dividend is in arrears for 2 years creditors includes preferential creditors of 38000 and the assets were realized as under under which we have land and building machinery patent stock trade receivable Thereafter, it is given the expenses of liquidation is twenty seven thousand two fifty. The liquidator is entitled to a commission of three percent on all assets realized except cash. The last one, the payment to debenture holder was made on thirty eighth June twenty twenty. So here we have to be careful. The liquidation took place on thirty first December two thousand nineteen, and the debentures were paid thirty eighth June twenty twenty. So that's like six months gap between that. Lastly, they ask prepare the liquidator statement of account. So now let us start preparing the liquidator's final statement of account. This is the format. Okay, on the debit side, that is the receipt side, we had to asset realize, other asset, surplus on securities, call on equity shares, and on the payment side, liquidator's account, debenture holder, creditors, preference shareholders, and equity share holders. Okay, now we'll always start from the receipt side. The very first thing on the receipt side is to asset realize. Now under asset realize, we only have cash bank. So let us first note down the cash bank which is given in the question on the asset side. Cash given is seventy five thousand. So we'll record here cash seventy five thousand. Next, whichever assets are realized, all those assets will come under the heading. other assets so let us read the adjustment the assets were realized as under land and building 3 lakhs machinery 5 lakhs patent 75000 stock 150000 and trade receivable 2 lakhs so all these assets were realized so we'll note down all those asset under other assets so we'll have land and building machinery patent stock and trade receivable with their respected amounts okay after noting that we check the next thing which is given two surplus from securities that is any asset which is realized against any liability okay such kind of assets are not given in this question so the amount remains nil call on equity shares that we'll see later on okay so these are all the things which are there at present on the receipt side to jump on the payment side the very first thing is the liquidators account in this we always have to remember there will be two expenses one is the liquidation expense and the other one is the liquidators commission or remuneration so now let us read the adjustment and try to find out these two things okay now as given the expenses of liquidation is 27250 so we can note down that liquidation expense 27250 next the liquidator is entitled to a commission so we'll note down liquidator's commission and it is at the rate of 3% on all asset realized except cash now all asset realized is this okay so now let us calculate 3% okay uh, of the liquidator's commission on all asset realized so under the working we'll note down all the asset which were realized okay so once we total it up we'll get 12 lakhs 25000 the total of all asset realized except cash now the liquidators commission they have mentioned it is going to be 3% of the total asset realized so 3% of 12 lakh 
which is 36,750. So, we will note down under liquidators commission 36,750. Okay, now after this step, we used to always total the receipt sign. Now here we came to know the total of this is 12 lakhs, 25,000 plus another 75,000 that comes to 13 lakhs. So we have total receipts of 13 lakhs at present and out of which we have already spent these two amounts. So we have quite an amount with us. So now let us start paying out all other liabilities. So after liquidators account, we have debenture holder account. So now let us check if there are debenture holders. Yes, 15% debenture of 100 each, 2,50,000. Sufficient amount we have so we can pay it off. We can pay out the debentures 2,50,000. After the debenture, there is interest outstanding on debenture which is 37,500. So we can even pay out that. So interest outstanding on debentures which is 37,500. Okay, now. There was still another interest outstanding, I guess. Yes, in your last adjustment, the payment of debenture holder were made on 30th June 2020. Liquidation got done on 31st December, but the payment to the debenture holder were made on 30th June. So now in this case, what happened is the debenture holder will say that they don't mind if the company pays them after six months, their entire amount, but they will charge interest. Now interest is at 15%. Okay. The outstanding period is 6 months. So 15% 6 month interest will be charged on the total amount of debenture which is 2,50,000. So we will write here interest accrued. Calculation point of view say it will be 2,50,000 into 15% that is the rate of interest. But it is only for half year because 6 months ka difference it is. So into 6 divided by 12. So the amount comes up to 18,750. Okay, so now we had total 13 lakh out of which we already spent these many amount. Okay, now next comes creditors. Creditors given in the question is 3 lakh 18,750. Okay, there's an adjustment to that. Creditors include preferential creditors rupees 38,000. So under creditors, we'll pay out first preferential creditors, which is 38,000. Now the remaining creditors, because there is no other adjustment mentioned, the remaining creditors will now become unsecured creditors and the amount will be 3,18,750 minus 38,000 which is 2,80,750. Okay, now still the company has sufficient amount with them. Okay, so we paid out the liquidators account, we paid the debenture holder, we even paid the creditors. The next are the preference share holders. Now let us check what is the value of preference share given in the question? Okay, so the preference share amounting is 5 lakhs and we still have sufficient amount with us. So we can pay out the preference share holders. So we'll write here by preference share capital amount is 5 lakhs. Okay, again if you will check we have total 13 lakhs out of which we'll subtract all these amount and we'll still come to know there is still sufficient amount which can be used to pay off something or the other. Okay. After preference share capital, now there is an adjustment given here that the preference dividend is in arrears for two years. So now let us calculate what is the value of preference dividend. Now 10% preference share of 100 each amounting to 5 lakhs. 10% of 5 lakhs that is 50,000. So the dividend of preference share per year is 50,000. It is in arrears for two years. So 50,000 into 2. So we'll have preference dividend of 1 lakh which is still in outstanding still we have sufficient amount to clear out the preference dividend so the next thing outstanding dividend or arrears of dividend 50,000 into 2 which will come up to 1 lakh rupees okay now on the normal case we would have total the receipt side minus with all the payment whatever amount would have been left we would have paid the equity shareholder however before paying the equity shareholders, we have to see if the shares are partly paid or fully paid. Now, in this case, there are two varieties of equity share. One is 2,500 equity share of 100 each at 75 paid up, and the other one is 7,500 equity share at 60 rupees paid up. So, in this case, we cannot directly pay the equity shareholders. So, here there will be a small working note which we'll have to prepare in, in order to get the values of the equity shareholders. 
ओके नाउ इफ द शेयर्स आर पार्टली पेड मतलब योर कॉल आल्सो विल कम इनटू पिक्चर एंड वी हैव टू इवन रिफंड सम ऑफ द अमाउंट टू द इक्विटी शेयर होल्डर्स सो लेट अस सी द वर्किंग द वर्किंग इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नाउ दिस इज द फॉर्मेट ऑफ द वर्किंग नोट वी हैव टोटल रिसीट less total payment will give you balance to the equity share holders add notional call now this is something new will give you refund to the equity share holders number of equity shares will give you the refund per share so this is the basic format that all have to follow okay whenever there is partly paid equity share given in the question so now let us start working now this is the solution this is the you know this final statement of account that we had till now posted okay working note said we need total receipt now total receipt is your total other asset plus cash which came up to 13 lakhs less total payment total payment is all on the credit side so add up all the credit side amount okay and whatever total amount you get that will come under less total payment now in this case if you total it up you get the total as 12 lakhs 89000 So we had total thirteen lakhs out of which we are going to pay out twelve lakhs eighty nine thousand already. So the balance which is left to the equity shareholder is eleven thousand only. Now we need to add notional call. Now let us see what is notional call. Now for notional call, we'll come back to the question, okay? And we'll try to figure out where it is given. Oh, where is the partly paid equity shares given? So in the question, it was given two thousand five hundred equity share of hundred each at seventy five paid up, and the other one is at sixty paid up. So now always remember now whenever notional call we have to find okay, and whenever they'll give you equity share partly paid okay, always note down the one which is ever lower. One is seventy five paid up, the other one is sixty paid up. So among those two, the least will be selected. In this case, seven thousand five hundred equity share of hundred each. 60 paid up now 60 is the lowest amount among the two so rupees 60 will be paid up okay so we note down 60 okay we have to make equity share all types of equity shares at par or at equal okay so if you are going to pay out to the equity shareholder we are going to pay them out at equals level so we need to make even they are partly paid equal okay so the first type of share they were 75 rupees paid up The second type is only sixty rupees paid up. So if I have to make sixty rupees fully paid up to the seventy five, okay. If I need to make sixty, okay, touch seventy five rupees. So I will need another fifteen rupees to be added, okay. So that fifteen rupees is nothing but the notional call. So the company will now make a call to their seven thousand five hundred equity shareholders, okay, stating that they have to pay fifteen rupees to make their share par with the. 2500 equity share of 100 each okay so now in order to get the notional call value 7500 into 15 that is 112500 that's the total value of your notional call so again in order to find the notional call okay always first check whichever is the lowest paid up value we note down that then we try to get it at par to the other paid up value the difference is nothing but the notional call per share that amount into the total number of equity share will give you the total notional call so now we come back to the working note the balance to the equity shareholders was 11000 we add the notional call of 112500 so the total amount that we need to pay the equity shareholders is 123500 now the shares are both the shares are at equal meaning both are 75 rupees paid up now Okay, so now what are the total number of equity shares we have? Seven thousand five hundred plus two thousand five hundred. So total we have ten thousand shares. So if we need to find refund per share, it will be one lakh twenty three thousand five hundred divided by ten thousand. So the refund per share comes to twelve rupees thirty five paise. So now in this case, it is like if the equity shareholder has given us seventy five rupees, we are only going to pay them. Twelve rupees thirty-five paise as a refund. Remaining all the amount which was there with us goes into complete loss. So the equity shareholders are at loss. Okay, now let us see how can we use this refund per share. And what is the use of this particular amount? Okay, now look at this working very important. Okay, now 
we have in total 10,000 shares, which are of two types. Okay, one is the 2,500 equity share of 100 each at 75 paid up, and the other one is 7,500 equity share equity share of 60 paid up. Okay, the first category of shares they are 75 rupees paid up. We are going to refund them 12 rupees 35 paise. So in short, the equity shareholders of 2,500 equity shares are in complete loss of 62 rupees 65 paise. Now, if the same thing we have to find for the other one, okay, 7,500 shares are 60 paid up. But we are also going to give them a call of 15 rupees. That is the notional call. So add 15 rupees. That is the notional call. So total now again, this also comes to 75 rupees paid up less refund of 12.35. So when you subtract it, okay, the loss again comes to 62.65. Now remember in such kind of somewhere you have partly paid the equity shareholders, the loss incurred by the equity shareholder will always be the same. If they are not same mother, there might be some calculation errors that you'll have made. Okay. So now when we talk about the first category of share, Okay, the company, this equity shareholder had already paid us 75 rupees. Okay, and we have we have to now refund them 12.35 rupees. Okay, but in case of the equity share of the second type, they had only paid us 60. We have called an amount of 15 rupees from them and we have to pay them 12.35. So here the equity shareholder has to pay us 15 rupees and we have to pay them 12.35 so rather than then rather than taking 15 from them and paying 12.35 to them okay we'll try to get the net call so net call is nothing but 15 rupees that they have to pay us less 12.35 that we have to pay them so in short we have to make a call of 2.65 paise per share Okay, so from the first category of there is no call required. So we just have to refund them the total amount for the second category of shares. We have to call an amount which is equal to 2.65 per share. Now let us see how do we use these two amount in a solution. Okay, till here we had solved lastly. First thing we'll note down the equity share that is call on equity shares. 7500 category equity shares had, you know, for them we have to make a call of 2.65 so 7500 into 2.65 amount will come to 19875 so this is the amount of call on equity shares for the other category of equity share we have to pay them 12.5 so 2500 into 12.35 that amounts to 30875 okay okay i don't think there's any more adjustment available so now if you try to tally it out Okay, it should be same on either side, which will be 13 lakhs 19,875. Okay, so with this, the sum comes to an end. Thank you.